Although I've done other videos about the ride across country to the Sturges Motorcycle Rally in the past, each one is different because it follows a different route. And as many of you know, I'm not trying to get to Sturges per se. I am looking for all the little adventures and everything unusual that happens along the way. And this particular ride had quite a few different things happen. And so I'm going to make, you know, like a few videos kind of a continuing thing because it's too long. I've got over a hundred little videos to make this particular um, series of going across the country. Okay, now this little ride is going to begin here in Asheville, North Carolina, where I did some work to my bike. Go through the Smoky Mountains and somehow on back roads, because I know I didn't take the interstate too much. I don't remember which roads. Through Kentucky and all the way up to Cincinnati, Ohio, before starting the journey west. Now don't let that little map be confusing. Each inch on that thing is 100 miles and the actual distances between Asheville and Cincinnati is just around 400 miles. So with that, let's get started. Okay guys, this is actually the last day I'm leaving here. And I was gonna show you my camp. I've started to tear it down before I remembered I should do that. Um, what happened was I spent a couple of days here changing tires for Jody and I worked off my entire bill so we're even my bike I, I don't know what all I did that made the bike run right but it runs really good now when I got in here it ran really crappy I did a lot of things to it I fixed a lot of little stuff on it rebuilt the front end on it was the biggie and I changed the cam from an EV27 to an EV13 which I like better so now it runs really nice and I'm ready to split. And so it's early, Jody ain't here yet, he ain't opened up the shop. But I'll show you what, how I lived while I was here, okay? Let me go back. I've lived in the back or behind or whatever of quite a few shops in my day. Okay, I just took the big tarp down so you're not going to see it because I forgot to do this video. But that's it. You can see it's, well, it's 12 by 16. Okay. Now, this here has been my shower. See it? Close. Runs over there. I just come back here because I'm dirty after working on these bikes all day. Okay? And then... I'm getting ready to split, bringing everything out here. My camp has been right here. Now, I took down the big tarp, but the big tarp came from, it was attached. I put a couple of screws in the side of this building from here all the way over because they get rain here, okay? And I cut back some of the trees over there. So that tarp came out to probably here. So I had this whole area covered. And the reason is, is because they get rain here. And I had to set in a full on camp that um, I wouldn't have to think about. They get like, it rains hard at times, usually not for too long, at least this time of year. So I, I had to waterproof myself out, man. So let's take a look. We, there's this car lot next door. This guy's a, a smaller private business like Jody. They share this lot here. They don't seem to care about me being here. Um, across the street, we have a gas station convenience store. And this here is actually a restaurant. It's closed today. It's a good bre breakfast place. It's usually open. <clears throat> it's Tuesday. And that's about it. So most days I had my bike working in the evening and I could take off. But there was a few days when I didn't get it put back together yet. And so, you know, I couldn't go anywhere. So I just stayed the night here and never left. So we had those conveniences across the street. And I'd make sure I had a little food and there's plenty of water. And uh, that's about it. I'm getting packed up here. I'm getting ready to split. The bike runs beautifully again and I'm really ready to go.
night stop back there. This is Cherokee, North Carolina. It's an Indian town. And uh, a lot of history to it. So there's some guys there with their bikes. And then I get to talking with this one kid. He's a really young guy. And he's been out on his bike for two weeks. He's got his job. And he's packed up. And he ain't going home. He don't know what the fuck he's doing. He wants to ride Route 66. Which is too hot this time of year. So we get to talk about Quite a while, I tell him, well, I'm going up here to visit a buddy of mine in Cincinnati, and then I'm in for South Dakota for starting. I said, you're welcome to come along if you want. So, we'll see if he catches up. I think he'll come. Because he got pretty excited about it. And that's the way I was. When I had a chance to travel with Ken and Billy, this is many years ago. We don't see him much anymore. He's just got too old to pull him off the right. But when I had a chance to travel with him, it was very exciting for me to be able to go with a guy who's been doing this longer than me and who was at home out here. And I learned so much from him. Wigwam Hotel, right? <laughs> Totem pole craft shop. This town's become a tourist thing. They make their money off the tourists and they have a casino. But it has a lot of ancient history. Very interesting. I read a book about it once. So anyways, I'm heading north. Just crossed into the Smoky Mountain National Forest here. I'm crossing through it. Smoky Mountains. For those of you who've never seen Gatlinburg, it's a Disneyland tourist circus. Jesus Christ. just going to have a look at last night's camp. I don't want to go down there and put myself in the view of that road this morning. You can see it's heavy traffic. This is somewhere in Tennessee. And uh, I just saw this road coming up in here, stopped at the bottom and walked in. There used to be a bunch of homeless people, or at least some, there's a big homeless camp over there, but they're gone. It's been abandoned for, it looks like a couple of months to me. And so it's a busy road. It's just a night's camp, but let's take a look. Okay. We got this road coming in. And it's kind of, it ends right here. And I just pushed back into this spot. As you can see, I'm under these trees. All right. Now, last night, mm, I hung out I th and read a book and all that. And I could see lightning up there, and you know, I'm like, ah, is the rain coming in? Because you know, these tents, man, they don't really hold water, especially if it rains for a couple hours. They everything gets wet, they start leaking, water gets under them, etc. etc. The best thing is the tarps. I always use the tarps. So eventually, you know what happened was all of a sudden this wind came in, man. We had like wham, wind just swirling everything around. But because I'm in these trees, which fortunately in this spot I have the ability to use these trees, that's why I'm pushed into them. I like to try to use the land as a break against weather, right? And so the trees knock the wind down a whole lot. Then I'm like, am I going to put this tarp up or not? I don't want to. I don't like to. It's a pain in the ass. So then it started to rain a little bit. And here's the thing. If you're not sure if it's going to rain or not, and, and I don't know if it's going to happen, and I go to bed and I think, yeah, probably it won't. Many times I've had to wake up 
in the middle of the night, get out in the pouring rain, throw a fucking tarp over everything. <laughs> and in this spot, because of the noise from this highway and there was frogs, I'm going to use earplugs. Earplug, usually rain wakes me up quick. When I'm doing that, when I'm wearing earplugs, a lot of times I don't wake up until it's pouring. I've been out in the fucking pouring rain, <laughs> putting up the tarp and everything uh, before. But so I just put it up. I was like, then if I wake up and it's raining, I can just go back to sleep. So anyway, this is the camp and I'm packing up and I'm heading out. Everybody knows I like abandoned things, so I'm gonna go look at this abandoned chopper here. Big old thing. It's got the look of an abandoned thing. There ain't no way to get into it except to go through this broken window. One on the other side up there is broken too. I'm gonna see if I can figure a way in. Ain't much to see, but I wanna see it. Here's what's left of the cockpit. Interesting thing. You can't get in to the back of this from here. Huh, not much left of it. Look at this panel. Old. I had to come into it. I'm curious what it uses or used for a motor. Looks like the motor ain't in it no more. I think these guys sat on top of it. I think it was in here. What makes me think that is see the drive shaft comes up, goes up through here. Cockpit's above it, so they were sitting on it, it looks like to me. Strange, look, there's a radiator, I guess, some kind of cooling thing. I'm gonna guess this thing didn't use a turbine. Some of the really old, double blade choppers I found one in Alaska in a junkyard and it used a radial motor like they use in crop dusting plants I couldn't believe it a guy who'd ridden in one once told me that those things are scary he said they were they should never fly he said they shake and buck and kick I don't know I mean they use turbines in them now but I don't see that a turbine I don't know if it uses a radiator for anything I'll look in the back now, this is your passenger so it's obviously not a luxury thing, maybe military. Hmm, much to see back here. Some kind of old equipment. Now you can see the drive shaft running through above me all the way to that prop in the back. That drive shaft is what drives this propeller back there all the way from the front. I find that rather fascinating. It's a long ass drive shaft. That thing's a bitch to get through. Wonder how many guys have actually gone through it. Can't do it if you're fat. Fuck, I hardly fit through that. I have no idea what year this thing is. It looks like it was military to me. I don't know. So, if anybody knows, hell, tell me in the comments. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Just a roadside stop. I was just at a stoplight up here and a couple of guys pulled up next to me and and asked me if I wanted to come eat. They watched my stuff. And I just didn't video the whole thing because it's just like getting together with some people and shoving a camera, you know, having a camera all the time is whatever. I mean, all we did, they brought, me, brought us to eat, bought me dinner. So that was cool. There was a couple guys and, a, and then one guy's wife, his fiance, they're getting, they're getting, no, they just got married. No older guys. Anyway, so I'm just pointing that out. It brought me here. And that's been happening a lot lately. It happened at the truck stop when I just stopped. Oh, there's something. It started raining on the way up the road here. And I had just gone by a, a TA truck stop. And I turned around, went back, put the bike underneath the awning. I got a shower from a trucker. Went and got cleaned up. And then, you know, which I really needed... And then when I got done, it was still, it stopped raining. But the roads were still wet, and the trucks were kicking up mist in the cars. So I thought I'd wait till the roads dried a little. I went back into the TV room, watched a little TV, and drank some coffee. And the same thing happened, and I ended up talking with that guy for a long time. By the time I got done with him, the roads were clear. 
So, since I didn't film it, sorry guys, I'm just pointing out that's what just happened. But anyways, I'm going to keep going. In the second part of this little series, I'm go we're going to be visiting a friend of mine that I've known for a very long time. He used to live in San Diego, and we used to bomb around together from time to time. And he, that's when I used to take off for the summers, and he took off and traveled all kind of miles too. He's got a bagger with like 350,000 miles on it. He does all his own work and will work on friends' bikes. But um, he moved to Kentucky, and we've both gotten a bit older. And in that video, you're going to learn a little bit more of my own personal history because, well, well, we're just going to see it there. And so I hope you guys uh, see that. It should be out in a week or so. And, of course, I'm going to leave you all the usual um, links to my book and to um, my donate stuff for anybody who wants to use it. For anybody who wants to put gas in that bike over there. <laughs> and for everybody who does it, you know, there's never pressure there, man. And with that, I hope to see you guys on the next installment of this cross-country ride.